Hello. Well, I guess it's been a really long time since I've updated anything on the farm, so I guess now is as good a time as any. Um, we're in winter now, December, a week away from Christmas in 2020, so uh, let's end the year on a good note, <laughs> shall we? Um, so here's our self pasture. We've got Belle right here next to me and then beefsteak back there. And then in <clears throat> I've got sirloin. And then this beautiful little sassy princess is Iggy. We've had a lot of issues with the cows. Um, mainly this girl right here because every 21 days she goes into a heat cycle. Which makes her really, really, really want to get out of the fence. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is a problem because we are right next to a fairly busy road. Um, not super busy, it's an old highway, so not a lot of traffic, but still regular traffic. Um, as well as surrounded by cornfields, so you know, farmers aren't too happy when they go out in the field. Um, <clears throat> but I've had another big issue recently. This spigot, supposed to be frost free, froze up on me. Probably partly my fault. Um, I did have the hose still connected, not thinking about it before it did snow. And we've tried torching it and everything, but we think that the line is frozen in the well and it's out in the open there's nothing we can do but it is about 41 degrees now so I'm going I just hauled two buckets up here of water because they are running low to where this little man sirloin he cannot reach the water when it's this low so I got to fill it back up but I really don't want to take two buckets up and down a hill because I have to go all the way down this hill to the house for that spigot. Fill up two buckets and carry them back up. It's not fun. Um, so here goes nothing. Let's see if it's unthawed. <gasps> yes, I have water. That is a wonderful sound. <laughs> <clears throat> so while I'm filling up this, they're going to be so happy to have water that they can reach again. <clears throat> All right, well, let me fill this up and I'll get back with you. Well, 25 five-gallon buckets full later, they have a full trough. Next up, piggies. Well, I got the piggy water all filled. That's only about 40 gallons versus the 175 in the other one for the cows. So now I decided to try my hose to fill the goats and shockingly I was able to get it to uh, flow water. Um, it had a few little ice chunks that had to work out but it all it all went through however my my thing is stuck. It got frozen in there. So I'm hoping that the water will raise it up and then I can get this ice chunk off. I'll just flip it over and break it up so I can get my little salt water um, bucket thingy out of there and have it floating again. And yeah, I think what really helped this hose is because it is completely strewn across my pasture and it gets full sun because that's south so sun is up there it's blasting heat on this and it's a very very heavy duty like the heaviest duty hose i think i've ever owned because it came with this house i'd probably never spend that kind of money on a hose but now i'm second guessing myself so um yeah uh obviously my little spigot thing is probably not going to make it through the winter but that's okay it also came with the house it's not in the greatest shape anyways, but, uh, but yeah, so we're going to, ooh, and it came loose. Look at that. All right, so, yep, it definitely is pushing the ice up, so we're going to get that broken loose. Okay, well, now that all the water is done, I really need to get everybody fed 
and uh, all that jazz. So going back down to our little barn and going to collect feed for everybody. I'll take you along for that ride. Okay, we're in the barn um, and I just got a phone call sta uh, stating that there's another calf coming today. So I need to kind of prepare for that calf. I'm going to get everybody fed first. Say hi, Jelena. Hi, Nina. She's a good girl. Um, I need to get that prepared, but I need to get everybody else fed first. So this is Jelena. I don't know if I've I probably haven't introduced her yet, but she's our livestock guardian. And um, she's a one-year-old Great Pyrenees with 1 16th Marema sheepdog. Um, that was on purpose per um, her breeding lines, but she is a uh, prodigy of a long, long line of working LGDs. And her family um, is in Kentucky, so um, I got her from all the way in Kentucky. But she is such a good dog, um, such a good guardian. She loves her goats. She loves her baby goats. And um, so much so that she does not want my buck mounting my girls. There's my little buck, Frosty. He's got frostbitten ear tips, so... That's how he got his name, but um, <laughs> he's my newest buck. I just got him this year from a family friend who has raised Sonnens for years and years and years. So um, Jelena is very good friends with Mr. Frosty over here. They love each other so much that they always wanted to play and Frosty was not allowed to breed um, Millie and Molly. Um, so... Jelena is sadly separated from her best bud, but that's okay because after we make sure that these girls don't come back into heat, then she'll be released back in with them. So there's Millie. Yeah, hi Millie. There's Frosty. And there's Molly. There's my Molly girl. Yeah. So hopefully they are now officially being bred by him. He's very stinky now, uh, whereas before when Jelena was in with him, um, he was not acting bucky at all. No bucky behaviors, no urinating, um, <clears throat> no stinkiness. He smelled like a fresh little baby goat. And uh, yeah, he wasn't doing a little curled lip or being interested in the girls at all, but now, now he is. <laughs> Now he's very interested. I didn't have her out for more than like 10 minutes and he already started acting bucky and very interested in the girls because they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Yes. All right. So my plan is I don't want to dirty this pen. This pen has been disinfected completely and is ready for kidding come spring I'll just add new uh, fresh layers I mean that was clean but of course their poop gets in there a little bit so my plan is come March when my older girls um, all my yearlings are ready to kid um, this will be one of their pens it'll be this pen this area and then we're building another wall right here to add an official other pen. I think I want to make it a temporary wall though because I really like having this extra space when we're not kidding or you know for anything else such as a calf or you know poultry of any kind. So these are my uh, kid warming huts. They have holes already cut. They're completely cleaned out um, but I just have the entrances turned to the other side. <laughs> They're sitting on top of my milking stanchion which is, is obviously not in use at this time. Um, so yeah, temporary wall. So this will be one, two, three areas. I do have a fourth area, but I like that to be in conjunction with the barn yard because that goes right outside. Um, so I'm going to leave that for anybody else that is not kidding at this time. So they don't have to be up at the pasture when they're heavily pregnant. Um, they can be close down here and I can monitor them as well as monitor their feed intake and not just toss it and run away. So my plan is today, I'm going to move these three 
to that outdoor section and the barnyard. So they already have a water trough that sits outside that's frost free. And I just need to figure out how I'm going to feed them out there because they do need a long trough like this, otherwise they tend to fight over the feed. So I gotta figure out how to set that up really quick. And then I'm gonna put the calf in here so that I don't mess up my clean, sanitized pen, just in case the calf has some loose stool issues or anything like that. Hi, girl. Um, I don't want my panels getting all messed up. You know, another good idea would be just to completely take that apart and take it out of there. That, that might be a good idea. But, I don't know. I don't know. What should I do? What should I do, Millie? But, um, no, I, I think, I think I'm just going to leave it to this outside area right here. It's plenty enough space. Um, for a newborn calf. It was just born this morning. So um, we're going to do that. I'm going to get everybody fed and then I'll get back down here and get all that done. So for now, I need to get these goats fed. They're still going to be fed in the old area since they're already in there and I don't have to change it. Yeah, is that the gold food? So, hold on guys, hold on. Back. Okay, so this is where the part gets tricky for feeding. Just hurry up and skim it across. <laughs> so hopefully I can set up something nice just like that on the other side. Um, I'll show you that other side here because this door will fully close. Um, so they just have a bunch of hay out here and then they have their full barnyard right there. And, uh, so yeah, we'll get that, we'll get that all set up and figured out for that calf. All right. So now I need to get feed into a bucket for Iggy and she just gets one pound of feed. I found by measuring these yogurt containers, the um, yeah, they're two pounds of yogurt, but um, I've measured the feed and it is barely over a pound of feed in there. So it actually works out perfect as a measuring device. And this is, so this was an attached garage for our house. Um, and as you can see, that indoor area was a breezeway, <laughs> but we just lifted up the garage door and finished off the outside of our makeshift barn um, so that it has windows and a door and I don't have to, in the winter time, I don't have to lift up a whole garage door just to get in there because um, a lot of times with this door they um, compact hay and everything behind it because we deep bed in the winter time so then I can't hardly push that door in it's up a few inches off the ground but it's just not high enough um, to uh, to be able to go in and out there so I'm going over to my chore vehicle here. This is our our chore jeep. And it has been a huge lifesaver for me. As you can tell, it's been well used. But I just sent my feet in there and then I need to back up to the hay shed there. So we'll see if this puppy starts.
from Amy's. follow me into her little hut here and we put the hay up top dump her feed in the bottom and yeah give some good scratches and I like to check her hooves make sure there's no cracking or anything like that usually I bring my pick out and I will actually have her lift each, each hoof and I'll scrape, scrape all that out. But I don't have my pick on me because I'm in a hurry today. So we'll do that this evening. She's a good girl. Now everybody up here is waiting for their food. <laughs> Aren't you, Belle? Aren't you, Belle? I knew this was going to be difficult one-handed, but we can totally do this. I'm talented. Okay. Now for these guys, um, I've measured out the bucket full is roughly, um, this is a small bucket, so we're looking at about seven pounds of feed when I fill it. So, we'll stick it in here. That's kind of half full, so we'll do it another time. But I do roughly seven pounds. Um, 
her cow. Hold on one second. There, that's full. Cool. half since that first one was only half full. Give it to sirloin here. Alrighty. I love these by the way. <laughs> they are a lifesaver. And so far I haven't had any issues with them getting frosted over. So then I give them Gotta give the pigs some. They got a pig tax. Pig pigs. And then I've been giving them about three quarter of a bale in the morning now and three quarter of a bale at night. So that's keeping them nice and full to where they actually have not been eating all of the hay. There's usually still plenty in there um, this morning. I think they just kicked it all out. Hi, pigs. And these are American guinea hogs. I don't know if I've shown them before. But we're starting from scratch today. So, two uh, gilt American guinea hogs. Um, they should have been processed already. But this is my first time. I've never done a pig by myself. So, kind of nervous. And I don't know what to expect. So I need to make sure that I have enough space um, to actually store the meat before I begin. And I just got done processing rabbits. So, space is not really something in my freezer <laughs> right now. We'll get them done. There's Lacey, Honeydew, over here's Tootsie. She also has frostbitten ears um, from when she was a baby and her previous owner. Um, and there's my big boy, Casanova. We call him Cass. So they're getting a good meal this morning. And we're off to do the rest of the chores. I just check it every few days and I just gave them um, I just refilled their feeder yesterday so they actually won't need that again for three to four days so 
that's very nice I highly recommend if you can make bigger feeders if you have bigger flocks like I do um, it is well worth it and that's why I said water the ducks because they also have a giant feeder and we'll see that shortly all right so just got the ducks <laughs> some fresh water these are Ancona ducks there are 15 of them and that's their feeder I was telling you about so uh, very very nifty I can fit three 40 pound bags of feed in there at a time and that lasts these ducks quite a while quite a while for sure okay well off uh, to the bunnies so just for a moment I thought I'd show you my chicken water so I have these horizontal nipples and I didn't even have to train them on it they just figured it out very quickly as I was setting it up so um, I put them at varying heights because I do have some different size chickens um, and then on the inside I have a fish tank heater and you can see the other side of the nipples on this side but the fish tank heater is a variable temperature so the lowest I can do it is 65 degrees and then this extension cord going all the way over to our outlet box. I also have a heater in here. Um, it only keeps it maximum 45 degrees, um, but it's radiant, so it actually helps um, keep their, uh, you know, just, just a little bit of added warmth. Um, I'm not concerned about power outages because a lot of my chickens spend a lot of time outside anyway. Um, they don't really care. Today is a high of 41 degrees, so 45 really isn't that far off. Um, but I do have a remote to this that I can shut it off um, when need to. And it's fully fenced off, so nobody can roost above it or poop on it. Um, it stays very clean, so um, that's that. Okay, now we are in my bunny barn. And this litter um, is now nine weeks old. So they really need to be separated, but I had to wait to process um, all my other bunnies that were in this side. Um, I'm keeping her, so I didn't process her. She's my she's my next line, uh, next generation of Californians. I'm probably replacing Miss Bailey. Um, I love her, but she's uh, getting up there in age and isn't producing as many kits as um, my other Californian and this okay so let's just introduce everyone here this is Fiona um, the black mama right there that's Fiona sorry they're really hungry this is Bailey this is Gamora hi Gamora she's a silver fox um, Fiona's a New Zealand so Bailey's Californian this is silver fox um, this is Doll. I just love her, her redness. This is Harmony, my other silver fox doe. Uh, Doll is a New Zealand also. And that mama back there, if I can see her, that's Chloe and her litter of babies. And her babies are a mix. So she's a Californian and I bred her with Charlie, my New Zealand buck. So, um, they are mixed babies, but they're going to get huge so fast. See how much bigger they already are versus my New Zealand babies. Oh my goodness. They're so hungry. And of course, this is Charlie, my New Zealand buck. And this is Axel, my Californian buck. I have an empty cage here, um, for my, uh, silver fox buck whenever I get him um, needs cleaned out but it's been empty for a while so don't have a name for her yet but it will be um, a name that starts with I do a name that starts with I because I have 
Yep, H is my last one for harmony, so I need need an I name for a doe. And indigo doesn't quite work. So let me get these guys fed. I keep their feet outside, but this is a been waterproof containers that I've used forever, and they've been amazing. So keeps their feed nice and fresh and cold in the wintertime, and in the summertime, it doesn't really matter because they don't get wet. So let me go ahead and get them fed and I'll hop back on. Okay, so since I, uh, my lines have frozen, um, I'm having to give them little bowls of water, which I don't like because a lot of times these babies especially, they'll get it like up in their nose and then you hear a lot of sneezing and stuff, but so far I haven't had anybody actually getting sick from it. Um, so I gotta go through the rest of them and and uh, fill up their bowls so that they can get a morning drink. And then we'll do it again this afternoon and again this evening. Okay, well, chores are done. So now I am just pushing these guys outside. And I'm gonna shut them off for now until I figure out what I'm gonna do. I do have a ledge there. I haven't, you know what, I'll probably try that first. Hey, Lonnie, calm down. So let me see if this will hang on that at all. Oh yeah, look at that. You know what, sometimes things are just meant to be. Okay, Frosty, you gotta come out here, buddy. Good job. And now I can just close this off. They're set, they have food and water. Um, and all I need to do now is set up for the calf. So um, I do have a hook in the wall here that I can hang a water bucket on, but it is a newborn calf, so I'm probably not going to work. I'm not, not gonna worry about water just yet. I wanna see if it makes it past 72 hours. Um, the calves I get are not really in the greatest of condition. Um, oh, that just reminded me. I need to put mineral out there for the goats. So, um, the calves I get are born um, in a slaughterhouse condition. So, a lot of them don't make it. Um, sometimes, though, like all the rest of them that I do have, um, they do make it. And they... Um, they make it with flying colors actually and have no issues whatsoever but with it being winter and it's cold um, I need to find I need to grab my multiple Shh, hold on um, I need to dig through all of my heat lamps and see which one works mount it up probably over here so the calf will have like a corner to go to and I'll mount a bunch of hay and shavings and stuff over here um, so that the calf has a nice warm spot to be. Um, but I gotta see, make sure that I have a bulb that works, otherwise to the feed store I go. Okay, so I laid down some, um, it's actually mini flake, that's normally not what I would use, but um, I think with a little bit of hay on top, it'll be nice and absorbent um, and easier to keep clean. So, uh, Hopefully this calf does okay, but I got a working lamp up, so that will be a nice padded warm area. And I just sprinkled flake around just to kind of give it some more absorption. Um, since, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> uh, since the goats have been in here. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, they've been urinating all over the place, so. All right, well. I guess I will go ahead and end um, this video here. It's been a long morning, um, but I also do oh handmade crafts and uh, things like that. And I have a four-day event um, with the farmers market because I'm part of the farmers market too. So four-day event um, today is day number two, and I need to go over there and check on my booth and make sure everything is okay. Um, <clears throat> I will link um, the farm website and uh, my craft website also in the description. So if anybody wants to take a look, you're welcome to. 
Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, today has been, like I said, a busy morning, but I think we made um, some good accomplishments here. All right. Have a nice day. See ya.